I love history, but the more I learn, the happier I am to be living today. Yes, it would have been great to hear Mozart playing live, or maybe watch Shakespeare putting on a show. But then you've got to remember, Mozart died at a mere 35. And Shakespeare shuffled off this mortal coil at just 52. The fact is, until recently, life for most people in the world was nasty, brutish, and above all, short. The causes are pretty obvious. Bad food, bad hygiene, bad toilet habits, and almost no understanding of infectious disease. In the 1860s, about one in four children born in America would die before their fifth birthday. Adults fared a little better, but still, up to one in a hundred of those in their 20s and 30s would die every year. And because early death was so common, it was hard to avoid the sight of it. We just don't see death in the way we used to. For instance, until the 20th century, most people died at home, and their families would clean and prepare their bodies for burial. Nowadays, most Americans die in the hospital. There's no need even to see the body of your loved one if you don't want to. So much exposure to death led to certain rituals and superstitions. For instance, in the 19th century, there was a great fear of premature burial. So if you had the money, you might have a bell put on your grave, connected by a little string to your finger, so you could ring it for help, if you got better. For those left above ground, mourning was heavy on the ritual. In Victorian England, if you lost an immediate family member, you're expected to wear black for a whole year. Black drapes were also supposed to be hung from your house for specified periods. And in Spain and Portugal, until quite recently, widows were expected to wear black for the rest of their lives. So did this constant contact with death make it any easier for people to say goodbye? Well, take Charles Cornwallis the hard-nosed British general, known for his aristocratic reserve. When his wife Jemima fell ill at the age of 31, he left the battlefields behind him to be with her and their two children. She died on Valentine's Day. The general shut himself off from his friends, but he poured out his heart in a letter to his brother. He wrote that Jemima's death effectually destroyed all my hopes of happiness in this world. So maybe it's okay that we'll never see Shakespeare put on Macbeth, or hear Mozart playing a piano concerto. At least we have a better chance of growing old with the people we love. I'm Chris Wolf, the History Guy at PRI's The World, and if you have any questions about the history of death or anything else history related, just drop them in the comments below.